In this video, I'll take you through the process of designing, building, and programming this robotic arm. I'll show you what types of CAD and programming software I use, how I came up with this design, and explain some of the problems I had along the way. So this video is not really a tutorial, but rather a set of guidelines if you're thinking about building your own robotic arm. The goal for this project was to design a robotic arm that was compact and easy to control. As you can see, it's pretty small, especially in its starting configuration. I originally planned on using inverse kinematics to control this robotic arm, but I was having some troubles with the code, so I decided to come up with a kind of unique way of controlling it that you'll see later in the video. First thing I did was make a detailed CAD design using Fusion 360. And like I said before, I wanted this design to be compact, so I tried to make it as small as possible and have all the motor wires hidden. I had many prototypes and redesigns before getting to a spot I was happy with, and at one point I even had an entire control board on the back cover panel. After reaching a design I liked, I printed out the final parts and put it all together. The arm's total cost is roughly $50 to $60, uh, so it's relatively cheap compared to others like it. Hardware consists of four standard servo motors, one micro servo for the gripper, an Arduino Uno, a servo driver board, lots of screws, lots of 3D printed parts, and some other little things like LEDs and switches. Now comes the exciting part, the unique control system I mentioned earlier. My idea for this controller was to have a small, almost scale model of the big arm, and instead of using motors in the joints, I'd replace them with potentiometers. The idea was to directly map the position of the potentiometers to the corresponding servo motors on the big arm, meaning if I moved the small arm to a certain position, the big arm would mirror my exact movements. I also added a push button switch on the last segment of the controller to open and close the gripper. The CAN process for the controller is similar to that of the big arm, as it's roughly a one-third scale, just with some tweaks for the potentiometers. In theory, the cable coming out of the controller could be as long as one would need, or even wireless to be controlled from another room or something. Okay, now that we have everything assembled and wired up, we can start the code. Right now, coding isn't my strongest suit, so what I have here is pretty simple, but it gets the job done. Okay, so here's the code. I'm gonna go pretty fast through this. Uh, this is some details for the servo driver board and the servo library up here. Here we assign the potentiometers to pins on the Arduino and give them a name. Uh, here we give the motors a name and assign them to pins on the servo driver board. Then here in the setup I have a delay so that I can line up the controller with the starting position of the arm. And here's some more stuff for the servo driver board. And this sets the gripper to close on startup. Here we're initializing the push button on the controller. Here in the move motor method we are reading the position of the potentiometers and then we're mapping that position to the position of the motors. Down here in the loop, we are assigning each motor a potentiometer to follow. And the rest of it is just for the push button on the controller. So if the push button is not pressed, the gripper automatically closes. And if we do press the button, it releases an object. Uh, again, pretty simple, but it works. And just like that. Yep, I broke a servo. Actually, I broke like three, but just recorded one. I had to take the entire arm apart to get a new motor in, so that was a pain. At least you can kind of see what the inside looks like. I finally got the servo in and wired up, but I forgot that I'd have to do it all again to attach the gripper. Thankfully, the gripper installation went well, uh, most likely due to the fact that I had taken this arm apart about 6,000 times now, so I was getting the hang of it. And now it's done. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this robotic arm turned out. It met my expectations and was a great learning experience. If you found some interest in this project, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Both would really help me continue making these videos and create awesome projects in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.